12 brought dead in hospital how to proceed in association with india medical legal and ethics association uh, there are few instructions for the webinar like uh, all the participants would be muted during this webinar the recordings of the webinar would be available on our platform within few days you could access the recording from there also uh, there would be polls at the end of the session. I will request the participants joining in to kindly submit the polls. If you have any queries, please type in the uh, Q&A section. If you have any comments, please type in chat section. We would be happy to take up questions at the end of the webinar. So uh, with this, I will just stop sharing my screen and give the platform to Dr. Mukul Kumar. Welcome all the esteemed panelists, the founder president, Dr. Satish Tiwari, sir, esteemed speaker for today, Dr. Rohini S. Deshpande, ma'am, and our energetic uh, secretary, Dr. Anurag Verma, Dr. A.S. Jaggi, and all other panelists who are there, as well as the attendees. I welcome you all. Today's topic is very important. Broad debt, it's an uh, emergency situation when a broad debt patient is, is uh, brought to the hospital and suddenly it becomes our responsibility. And many of us do not know how to deal with the situation. We are unprepared, we might make mistakes, etc. So the more will be told to you by Dr. Rohini Deshpande, ma'am. And I request our founder president, Dr. Satish Tiwari, sir, to say a few words of encouragement. Thank you, Dr. Mukul Tiwari, sir, and all other faculties and participants and dear delegates and members of the Indian Medical Legal and Ethics Association. As rightly said by Dr. Mukul, the problems, especially the legal problems in medical practice are increasing by leaps and bounds day by day. Daily we see some judgment by the commissions or the court, including the Supreme Court and various high court, where many of our colleagues they feel either the medical issue involved in that particular case was not properly understood by the court or it was not properly analyzed by the court or the police and the other authorities. So the legal problems are going to stay there for the next five to 10 years or even more before everybody understands what the medical how many times it is difficult for the doctors to go into the details of the life saving processes and what are the limitations in spite of the technical explosion still though we have a lot of technical advances and instrument developments and the various research uh, analysis and research and decisions. But still, we all know that life cannot be bought with money and the medical services may not improve the various stringent laws. So everybody has to understand the basic problem in a complicated medical issue. And broad debt case is one such medical issue where many times the attending doctor may not be knowing even the, not only the patient, but also the disease which he was suffering or the cause of the death. So he has to take a very delicate decision, especially if the patient is a child or a married woman or a woman because we know the 
female mortality is many times seen as a suspicious activity. So we have to consider all this and without wasting much time, I would request Dr. Mukul Tiwari, sir, to proceed with the further uh, for today's program. Thank you, sir. And I'll request the moderator to please uh, uh, show us the introduction slide for our uh, guest, our speaker today, Dr. Rohini Deshpande, ma'am. Yes. I sir. welcome her. Ms. Shubhi. Thank you, sir. We are waiting for the introduction slide. It is shared, sir. Achha, this is that's all. Okay. Yes, okay. So uh, Dr. Rohini S. Deshpande is West Zone Chairperson. She is uh, MSFRCOG in Obstetrics and Gaini, and she is a learned speaker and ex an expert in obstetrics, obstetrics and Gaini, medical legal matters. So I request Dr. Rohini ma'am to proceed with her presentation. Welcome ma'am. Uh, good evening, everybody. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, our founder president, Dr. Satish Tiwari, sir, and present president of Imlia, Dr. Mukul Tiwari, sir, as well as uh, Dr. Secretary, Dr. Anurag Verma, for organizing this webinar. Um, I would uh, actually, uh, I thought about this topic because recently I had an occasion where, you know, I had to face this situation and then I had to ring few of our colleagues to find out what exactly we should be doing. It was like uh, uh, about 45 year old um, lady who, was, who had come as a traveler to our place and she was at home and in the morning she was just about to leave to her hometown and she got a chest pain at home. And by the time these relatives took her to the hospital, which is nearby our hospital, actually, um, uh, she was dead completely. So uh, on arrival, there were few things to be done and she happened to be related to one of her friends. So he approached me and he asked me how we can get a death certificate. So that was a uh, really, you know, something which stuck to my mind that we do not actually are, are not aware of the protocols which are there and uh, what we should be doing in such situation where we face the death, which is sometimes uh, a very sudden death and uh, we don't know that person and we don't know the family background and uh, their illnesses also and apparently she was a hale and hearty woman so uh, i thought about choosing this topic so that you know we all are aware and we are prepared to face such situations secondly uh, we also face the situations where sometimes the babies are brought dead or in a pediatric dr satish tiwari sir must be also facing that you know babies are sometimes brought dead from the house and then uh, we are stuck you know as to what to do with it and the whole approach has to be very protocolized and our not only ourselves but our staff also has to be orientated to deal with such emergency so that you know we are on a right footing so may i share the screen now yes please ma'am sir meanwhile if you permit me i can uh, read full bio data of uh, madam Okay, please. So she is busy sharing, no? so, so I should introduce yes, her, uh, herself. Uh, yes, uh, Madam uh, Dr. Rohini Deshpande is the uh, uh, best journal chairperson of Indian Medical Legal and Ethics Association. She is MD, FRCOG, FMAS, and she has done diploma in endoscopy. She is immediate past president of MOX 2018 to 2020. The Association of Maharashtra Obstetric and Gynecology Societies. 
he uh, is a national mentor for laksha program government of india and nqocn initiative or committee member mission save the uterus and sops on hysterectomy uh, compendium of laksha manyata for private hospitals government of maharashtra initiative it's a government of maharashtra initiative uh, she is a pg teacher uh, in ashwini rural medical college uh, kumbhari sholapur Uh, she has got many scientific publications on operative hysteroscopy and color doppler in pih she has uh, she presented many orations and uh, academic lectures at state and uh, national level welcome madam thank you so much for your kind introduction dr anurag verma sir thank you very much so may I, may i proceed with my presentation now yeah okay um let's get back so broad dead on arrival is a very emergency situation as we all know it and every hospital and every doctor will face this situation some time or other so it's uh, very important to know these uh, protocols and uh, when the patient is actually brought by the relatives it could be for various reasons it's because maybe patient's relatives have realized that this patient is very serious and uh, now probably uh, may be dead or may not be dead and they want to confirm the death that's one thing that, that why they will approach the hospital and secondly even if they know that this patient is dead they want to get actually the diagnosis done or maybe uh, they want to get the death certificate and they want to get it declared from you that you know this patient is dead now so this situation um, is to be handled very um, properly because it has got lot of legal ethical as well as social ramifications and medical legal issues as well so they can be roughly classified as to death because of the known causes for example if the patient is having terminally ill patient like a cancer patient or maybe the patient is having a chronic renal failure or whatever and this patient uh, may be having a natural death at some point of time or a known case of heart disease so the death could be from the known causes but sometimes the death could be because of unknown causes and suddenly it will come in a hale and hearty patient and then this is not something that we should be dealing uh, with this this situation has to be dealt a little different then if patient is found dead by someone at home then also this is another category uh, you know which needs to uh, needs a special attention and death also can happen during the transportation that a patient is very serious and going from one place to another place and then the death occurs and in the middle somewhere then if your hospital is there then they would like to come and take your opinion so evaluating this patient if such patients arrives to your hospital that you may be there or your staff may be there so that's one point that i want to actually reiterate that the staff also has to be orientated to this problem because it may happen that the patient is brought dead and pay, uh, the staff admits and you know uh, then later on uh, you come there and the situation can be little uh, provocative so the patients uh, the, this the staff should be given a proper uh, training as to how to deal with a very serious patients or patients who are not breathing what to do and what not to do so evaluation of the patient has to be done by the doctor who is attending this uh, patient and one must know who are the relatives around and what is their relationship with the dead because sometimes they are brought with the by the friends or some neighbor sometimes the kith and kin so you know you should have that idea and what are the circumstances which has led to this situation like maybe patient had a severe chest pain or maybe there was a fight or stress or whatever very old frail and you know it, it may be a natural death for that patient but if the patient is young 
especially a young woman or a young boy or maybe a pregnant lady and suddenly comes with a death then the situation is little different then we have to ident make sure that we identify the marks on the patient and look for any suspicious marks that is very important if sub suspicious marks like maybe some strangulation or maybe some ligation marks and any kind of a injuries or burns or any stains of blood vomitus urine stool or even for that matter if there is a sexual assault it could be even a seed or any smell of any poisoning like for example organ of phosphorus poisoning so these are the things that we have to keep it in mind then examine roughly quickly uh, the color of the patient then patient is cold or not skin temperature pupils keratin pulses respiration heart sound and response to painful stimuli and then you will take blood pressure because patient has come to the hospital or may even put if you feel patient is not breathing and no keratin nothing no heart sound then put ecg and if you get a straight line then the question comes whether you will do cpr for this patient so to give cpr or not is a big question if you feel that the patient is actually de brought dead only then no question of giving cpr to this patient because their relatives will again start doubting you but if you feel that there is some ambiguity then you may give but this again cpr for how long you will give whether it is for 20 minutes 30 minutes 40 minutes uh, for a adult or a child you know this is again a debatable question uh, but um, you have to assess the situation and do it ecg also it is uh, like uh, subjected to the conditions then uh, you should rule rule out whether the patient is uh, in coma or not of course sometimes if the patient is heavily diabetic and patient comes in a very deep coma then you may not think whether it is a really patient has dead you know uh, been dead whether there is something like an actual to your rescue to conclude whether this is a patient is uh, dead or not and of course the documentation of this has to be kept in a register which is called as a broad dead register so after confirming that this patient is broad dead then you will make sure that you enter all this into the broad dead register and you get thumb impression before the rigor mortis sets in some patients may be brought to you in a state of rigor mortis so the diagnosis is pretty straight forward but sometimes when patient was gasping the relatives will tell then then are entering into the dead register then you have to think with what you will do next because the relatives are being provided if the patient talking to them has to be done on a very humanitarian ground and even our staff has to cooperate with these relatives because lot of relatives will be hovering around and their mental state may not be in a very sound condition so it has to be handled pretty well after telling them that this patient is brought dead then they will ask you for the death certificate and then the question comes whether you will give it or not it all depends on how you judge the situation and whether this has happened in a known patient if the patient were to be your own patient terminally ill you have seen her her or him previously and a patient has died then of course you know that he has led it has led to a natural death then you may be certifying this as a uh, death uh, with on your own risk but if the patient is not known to you it has happened suddenly in a in a or sometimes in a suspicious situation especially in young men and women then women then in that case you have to uh, you cannot issue the death certificate without actually handing over this body to police and this will be a medical legal uh, like um, uh, point in this so while you are doing all this the staff involvement and the cooperation of the staff and their professional uh, behavior also is of utmost importance while we are doing all this evaluation
so is, we are coming to a very important crux because in such situation the important uh, point becomes of a death certificate i would like to narrate you my experience that uh, in our neighborhood there is a, uh, there was a teacher who was actually a very busy teacher and uh, uh he had something like he was running a private tuition class of 100 and odd students and in the middle of a class he actually had a severe chest pain and he fell down and he virtually collapsed and i was summoned to attend this emergency so we went there our staff also accompanied we tried to uh, assess whether he is uh, uh, breathing or not breathing carotid pulses but it was like you know he it was like he was dead and then uh, we had to take him to the nearby hospital where it was a bigger hospital and we took him there and he was declared as a broad dead only so later on they came to me and they asked me for the death certificate for honestly i actually did not know that whether he had any hypertension or heart disease or anything and uh, i just told them that you know i cannot issue you death certificate and you have to go to your own gp or a physician to get the certificate if you feel that he already had some heart element so you know this is the approach that you have to have even if they are very known to you and uh, if such emergency comes you have to be very very emphatic about uh, telling them that what you can do and what you cannot do mm, just a minute so as a rule all patient brought to hospital as dead on arrival should be made as a medical legal and death certificate should not be issued and we have to check all their papers if they are available and any illnesses history has to be taken and um, examine the body as i have told and if we are convinced that we can issue the certificate because of uh, any natural death which has happened then it has to be absolutely on our uh, own risk and the caution as i already said that it has to be uh, taken uh, in a death of young male or young woman and child of any age you know it has to be a medical legal and there is uh, absolutely no harm in making this as a medical legal case we have to inform the police and police will have sometimes the assistant commissioner of police may have sometimes the Uh, power to wave off the post mortem if he is convinced now here i would like to bring it to your notice that you know uh, when i discuss this situation of broad dead then uh, with some of the physicians or pediatricians and i ask them what they do if such patients come to your door then this is just off the record but then practically what they told me that if we actually take this patient into the hospital and try to examine and you know register in our broad date register and we want to do mlc for this we have to inform the police so the whole day the procedure will take and the police may not come in time to get this body to uh, mortuary so we may have to keep this body in our own hospital and this can be very traumatic for everyone because other patients also are there around and uh, for relatives also it can be very distressing situation so uh, what practically people are doing that is what i found out that even the corporate hospital i was surprised you know they just tell them that this patient is brought dead we can occasionally they will give issue you a certificate which is brought dead certificate not the death certificate and they will actually send this patient to nearby government hospital where the patient will be they will tell that you know you have to immediately take the patient to government hospital even without examination also if they found out find out they know that this patient is dead they will say that you take immediately to government hospital and everything will be sorted out for so in government hospital there will be a, a police chauki will be there so immediately the post mortem etc will be organized so this is what happens if somebody dies accidentally or a uh, halids uh, death which is all of a sudden you know and then uh, relatives may have to take body from this place to another place and they get really you know um, a very bad time for them so uh, this issue has to be developed very much like legal with a legal 
corner in mind and on a uh, humanitarian basis as well uh, so that you know the uh, relatives also feel that uh, they are not actually been treated ill treated then uh, regarding as i told you that facility standard we can tell them that our facility standards are not they are to treat this patient like for the heart disease our hospital is a specialty hospital related to obstetrics and gynecology or urology and we don't uh, treat any heart element so we can you know shift them to another hospital that's what we can do so anyhow we have to appear that you know we are taking a humanitarian approach if you want to shirk away the responsibility of dealing with such mlc problems and quickly evaluate assess and act and have a good communication um, amongst ourselves with the relatives and our behavior of the staff also has to be a very cooperative and of course uh, such patients to whom we actually shift to another patient uh, hospital we don't keep any records because if you keep a record then sometimes the inquiry will come back to you but it is a big question but ideally we should keep a record and we should keep a broad date register and information to the police and of uh, post mortem examination whenever it is uh, or maybe uh, it may be necessary in nearly all the patients because uh, this is the right way to do it so i think uh, i have tried to cover all the aspects of it but i would be uh, happy to uh, take inputs from our uh, president as well as the formal uh, this former founder president and dr anurag verma as well about the, their experiences maybe they can also share thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to be with you all and discuss this uh, um, situation thank you very much thank you so much ma'am for your wonderful presentation i'll request the audience if you have any questions to kindly type in the q and a section or in the chat column a uh, very nice presentation ma'am and it has raised thank many you, questions and <clears throat> when i was hearing this uh, your talk i also realized that this is a very important topic and we should all have preparedness for such situations but uh, most of us do not have preparedness and there are many gray areas also in this like you said that uh, we should uh, send such patients after initial attending and checking we should send them to government hospital but uh, they may not be ready to go to the government hospital they may say you uh, mm. try more we want to try more is there any chance send us to the best hospital then we have to send them to a private hospital a corporate hospital you can go and try there because they are not satisfied if we say that nothing can be done and the patient is dead already dead so in such situation uh, we have to allow but as you said wherever the patient goes no problem but we should keep a record that the patient came to us and we allowed them to take the patient to because we could not do anything and the patient is dead and they wanted to check uh, have a cross check so we allowed them to go to another hospital and yes it should be informed to police also i think all cases all broad this a broad dead case should be reported to the police thanks thank you sir satish tiwari sir your observations dr roini madam excellent presentation and thank you sir as rightly said the most important thing which we should do if we suspect some foul play before declaring dead or before giving death certificate as you give the example also of the teacher while taking the class so i think if there is any suspicion of foul play the best option available with us is to inform the police and let them do the further investigation and whatever uh, action they have to take but we should not get entangled because there are cases 
where even the medical council or the national medical commission has taken for issuing death uh, certificate which was not attended by the doctor so do not uh, try to give the certificate in emotional uh, <coughs> thing yes definitely if you know the patient you know that there is no foul play then we can give but otherwise always please inform the police sir even uh, big hospitals we are small practitioners i have a husband wife team in my nursing home even the corporate hospitals uh, most of them i think they give only broad dead uh, certificate what do you say yes if you do not know the patient then how you will know the cause of the death so we have to yes. give, give the certificate as broad dead only and then the police has to do the post mortem and yes, give the yes. cause of death if the patient is known to us that he was a chronic uh, heart patient or chronic uh, renal patient then only we can write the cause of the probable cause of death otherwise yes. we can otherwise we cannot write the cause of the death yes relatives can submit the supporting papers that this uh, our patient was a heart patient or a fellow patient or some chronic having some chronic condition sir another uh, madam another problem which comes up uh, in india especially is uh, lack of awareness so i am a child specialist although this is happening much less now but uh, they will bring an adult it used to happen previously now the awareness is increasing of course and uh, we don't get such cases previously they used to bring uh, cases which were we were not qualified for i am a pediatrician they will bring an adult patient a geriatric patient so this is also happening yeah uh, yeah it's very uh, you raised a very valid point that um, a pediatric hospital can get a adult or adult uh, like uh, our hospital obstetric gynec can get a pediatric patient yes. and vice versa but uh, as a doctor when this situation comes or maybe uh, you know we have to be prepared like uh, we have to see the patient and uh, accordingly we have to deal with it so everybody has to be very much aware as to what to do and as you said the most important thing to do is to have a humanitarian a approach. human human face and human absolutely. approach absolutely yes because uh, that will take care of the relatives because these relatives are very much agitated like you know they will uh, they want to save the patient especially if the patient is young and all that you know it will uh, when a patient is a pregnant lady then uh, they be, they want doctor to try each and everything so in that case you may have to give a cpr and try if the patient they yes. feel that patient has had something like activity before they have actually brought it to you so it depends on the situation but our staff also has to be one thing which uh, i felt was a uh, little bit lacking that our staff is not trained to actually evaluate the patient if brought in a ambulance because once it so happened to us that this uh, staff uh, Uh, actually, took the patient inside, and the patient was actually dead. And we don't know how long the patient was dead. It patient was having rigor mortis, actually, and uh, you know she could not identify that. So it can happen. Yes. And if the doctor is not around at that time, then the situation can be very bad. They and then you don't do anything there. And sisters also just uh, they don't give any CPR and things like that. They will think you know what kind of services we are giving to the patient. So it can be very tricky. Ma'am, uh, here I would like to say that uh, you have also mentioned that this is a subject of debate. Uh, we have to prove to the relatives that the patient is dead. Yeah. Otherwise, they may say that you are not doing enough, and Absolutely. you have not. You could save the patient, we could save the patient, but you have not done anything. So, as you said, ECG or some other way to prove to the show to the relatives that uh, the mm -hmm. patient is not alive anymore. Yes, uh, so in that situation, we all have our monitors. 
we can apply yes, the sir. monitor and show that yeah. nothing is coming absolutely sir dr vk goyal is there yes, i welcome him good evening sir sir please your observations the ma'am has right pointed out number of points very rightly first yes. thing as madam said to be entered in broad debt register broad debt register as madam said is only in the big hospitals in small hospital this register is not there but the emergency register is is there i will say is i will say must be there in every hospital in that emergency register and make the entry immediately of that patient in that emergency register if broad debt register is not there one two if the patient is dead the moment you examine him there is no pulse no bp pupil dilated explain to the patients attendants ki there is nothing there is nothing two three four five relatives who are there with the patient with in a calm manner in a calm manner and tell them now now it is the duty our duty to give the cpr even to this this, this patient and tell them we can try again we can we can still try there is nothing in the body no pulse no bp pupil dilate ho chuki hai lekin hum fir bhi try karenge lekin ummeed koi nahi hai show that they are prepared and do your cpr other thing document all these things in your record right from the first examination first examination on examination patient came at on this date on this time attended by this doctor name of the doctor on examination no pulse no bp pupil dilated ecg done flat and revival done by proper steps of revival and declare it after half an hour or 20 minutes whatever the protocol is this is very important sir this the things i am talking is in a medical legal way what we need to do on on regular basis thank you Uh, Shubhi, there is a Dr. Naresh Kumar has raised the hand, so you can make him uh, ask if he has some query. Uh, and yes, there are sir. two questions in the question answer box, so you can take that also. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, so, ma'am, there are two two questions in the Q and A box by Dr. Amit Sual. Uh, what are the recommendations as regard to a uh, neonate who is brought dead? he is not yet enrolled in birth uh, birth register so does it require a death death certificate to be issues uh, issued and does a post mortem is required in such cases also um yes can i take this question yes yes ma'am uh, uh you mean to say that the neonate was brought dead to your hospital right and not entered in the birth register but then uh, birth may have taken place anywhere so it doesn't matter but if baby has been brought to you then it is uh, your abundant duty to examine the baby and see whether baby is breathing or not but then it may take cpr and that you may have to continue it for about maybe uh, more time not a uh, half an hour or 45 minutes which is given to adults but even an hour you may have to try before you actually say that baby is dead so this may take a little longer time and when you declare the baby to be dead then of course then it is a, a broad and dead and then you if you don't know the cause sometimes it could be aspiration or it could be some uh, congenital malformation or whatever which is not diagnosed or a heart disease severe heart disease so you may have to subject this to a post mortem and you have to inform the police that is what you have to do dr amit i think you have raised a very important uh, issue and uh, the birth information is the duty of the doctor or the hospital where the birth has taken up so they may inform after 7 days or 10 days also 
I think uh, till last year it was a two weeks uh, duration when the birth information can be sent to the municipal uh, authorities. <coughs> so anytime they can send, but if the death has occurred in our hospital, which is not the place of the birth, then we have to inform the cause. Uh, we have to inform the and we have to issue the death certificate. Why this is important? Because uh, if we do not give the death certificate and death is not informed to the municipal authorities, first we have failed in our duty to inform the death, whether it is a registered birth or not, that we do not know. So we have to inform the death. Other, the, another issue is that if we do not send the death certificate or we do not give the death information a report, then the relatives or the parents may go to the corporation authorities, take the birth certificate that this child was born and use it for some other baby who is uh, there uh, who, in their family or in their friend circle so that there can be misuse of the birth certificate of the, the child who is already dead. So the informing day uh, birth is the responsibility of the hospital where the birth has occurred and informing a death is the duty of the hospital where the death has occurred or the baby was brought dead so that there are no legal problems in future. Thank you, sir. I hope uh, we answer is clear. Uh, Ma'am, moving to the next question. What are the details to be mentioned in broad death certificate? Is there any sample for MAT? If so, kindly share that. Um, there isn't any sample format for the broad death, but you can say that such and such a patient, the name of the patient, age, which you have gathered from the relatives or whatever the documents are available, uh, was found to be dead on arrival at such and such a time on a such and such a date in this hospital or whichever hospital he was in um, and I have uh, he has been brought dead that is what we have to say we don't mention the cause of the death because if we don't know it and we don't want to commit then we will not mention because we are not giving a death certificate it is brought dead and it so happens that with this brought dead certificate they can take this certificate to the crematorium and some of the crematoriums without death certificate, they can take the bodies for further rituals. This can happen. Or with this broad death certificate from that particular uh, hospital, they will take, uh, like uh, I told you, the, la the lady who had come, they had taken this lady to some other town and there they got the certificate from some doctor. And, you know, there are some people who give the certificate. We don't know what happens to these patients. But this is a crux of the matter that we have to only say that only broad date and name of the patient, age, time, date. That's it. There is, I haven't come across with any kind of a format for this register, only the date, time and name. And we have to sign it and there we can take one signature of the witness also in our register. Uh, Mr. Naresh Kumar, I'll request you if you have any questions, uh, please uh, type in the Q&A or the chat section. If you want to speak, please confirm so in the chat section. Till then, I'll hand over the platform to uh, the dignitaries to uh, take the session ahead. So you are on mute. Yeah, if we still have time, then uh, I'll request our esteemed panelists to make their observation if they want to contribute anything else. Dr. Jaggi is there, he can comment. Yes. <clears throat> I would definitely comment, but uh, right now I am in the changing room of the 
<laughs> nursing home. Okay, 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 okay. So please, Dr. Tiwari, excuse me. Sir, no uh, I would, yeah, yeah. I'm just in the changing room, ma'am. Namaskar. I was Namaste. in the changing room and I'm just excuse me, please. No problem, okay. no problem. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Sir, uh, there is one thing which has happened lately is this death certificate. Like uh, these death certificates are now to be uploaded uh, on, after. Uh, uh, no, normally, we used to fill up those uh, pink and yellow forms for the death certificates, but now. That we have to fill it up and then upload it to the corporation portals. That is what they have made it compulsory. So this is one thing that we have to, if we issue the death certificate, we have to make sure that it is uploaded uh, in at least uh, uh, seven days time. Okay, ma'am. <clears throat> so, if there are no more questions, I'll hand over. Dr. Amit has another question. Okay. Uh, do we need to take fingerprint impression of broad debt as an identification conformity in, uh, in case it is brought by lay persons who are not related to broad debt people? Uh, yes, actually, we should take uh, fingerprints of the broad dead patient if it is uh, not a rigor mortis. But in case of rigor mortis, you can't take the fingerprints. Otherwise, you can take or else you can make a note of identification marks if you can find some. Uh, Dr. Amit, uh, I would like to highlight here that again, the important issue which you are raised has a lot of medical legal significance. And if lay persons have brought the dead body or a dead patient, that means uh, they are not known to him. So either it is a on the uh, roadside accident or in a place where there are no other relatives uh, staying with the that uh, particular person. So best way in such cases will be to inform the police. For those who have brought, uh, they are not related, they are not known to the patient. So we should not take any chance. Inform the police, let the police identify the body or give the record of the dead body, photograph, fingerprint, whatever they want to keep. Sir, uh, there is one more thing that I want to highlight is... Uh, Namaste, sir. Namaste. Yeah, I, 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 if you allow me, I, uh, I would like to add that as far as identification no. marks are concerned, so we should take uh, at least two identification marks of the body because if during, uh, if the body is kept in mortuary or if it is uh, partially destroyed in, in any way, then, and if the police looks for the relative of the disease, then uh, if uh, one of two identity mark, identification marks is there, then the body can be recognized. It is advised that uh, we should record at least two identification marks of the body. So I, I will add a little further to Dr. Verma's uh, observation. That is that these two identification marks should be distant from each other. Supposing you have yes, taken yes. one on the face, then you try to take another one at a different place, distance, distant to this one. And another important yes. point is when sometimes the bodies are exhumed after burial, then mm -hmm. these two identification marks, one of them may exist to identify. Nice, nice. And uh, I would uh, like to add here that uh, we are talking so much about the legalities, but the common practice so far has been, especially for small hospitals and nursing homes, the, to use some uh, tech, that's all, instead of going through the legalities. They will say to the relatives that we can't do much. If you want some chance, if you want to try your chance, you take to a bigger hospital, which may be nearby. And they will take the patient to that hospital and no record keeping, no formalities. This is a very common practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a very common practice. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, this, this, practically and this is what, what is, is advised happening. also. <laughs>
Dr. Satish sir's uh, observation on this. I, uh, I feel that uh, doing anything to the broad dead patient is a double-edged uh, sword, we can say. Because if you try to resuscitate or try to give treatment, then the patient or the relatives may say that because you delayed the referral, that's yes, why our patient died. You are not competent enough. Like we are pediatrician. And if we are seeing an adult patient and try to manage that patient, even by giving, uh, suppose, uh, some uh, IV bolus or something like that, it may happen that uh, you have tried to delay the treatment and that's why the patient died. Otherwise, if you would have gone to the nearby hospital, our patient might have been saved or something might have been done. So I think uh, this the decision we have to take way, will vary from patient to patient or from uh, dead body brought to the hospital, how much time we suspect the death. Can we convince the relatives whether they are in the mood to listen to us? Otherwise, they may also have the allegation that you are not competent enough to manage the adult patient for Rohini Desh Pandemendum. It may be that uh, you are the uh, gynecologist or a, you are a female doctor and then why you have seen a male patient who had a heart attack and you do not know ABC of that. Even in court judgment, we have seen that a, if a physician uh, or if a person is writing a nephrologist or endocrinologist, then there are decisions why you have seen a cardiology patient. So the court also many times say that you have done cross specialty. Though there is a permanent Katara decision that you should give emergency services, but as I said, it can be a double-edged sword. So we have to de uh, decide sir, in uh, each and every case activity. what on a particular basis, what should be done, what is the attitude of relatives, whether they believe in your treatment or whether they just want to confirm it from you that the patient is dead. Because many okay. times when they bring the patient or they ask you to come to home visit, usually it is to confirm the death. So we do not know yes. what is the intention of the relatives. So we have to analyze each and every situation and then act accordingly. Sir, uh, what you said is absolutely yes, right. right and uh, uh, I fully agree with you that, you know, it is a double-edged uh, weapon. And uh, that's why what we uh, I was told by one of the senior uh, uh, professional here that what you should do is you should train your staff to identify whether this patient is really dead or not. And in the ambulance or in a wherever uh, patient is brought, then they will identify and they will say that quickly you take the patient to another hospital. Doctor is not available at the moment. Yeah, tact, tact is also very important. And uh, a human face, human approach, and care, they all work very well. Because every patient does not come with an intention to harm you, basically. So being too much legal or uh, using too many legalities may also be an, a hindrance sometimes. So that's but why I said that you have to decide Absolutely. each and every case depending upon the situation. Yes. Sir, one thing I want to say, the word doctor is not available, the things are not available, are not accepted. Are not accepted. Whenever the person enters your place, you have to attend and you have to properly document it and give the document to in his hand what you have said to him. This is very important. Otherwise, we will be afraid. At that time, you don't have any answer to say. So, to save yourself. Yeah, legally it is right. I think uh, we have to start, uh, make a strategy ourselves. And then uh, as uh, Dr. Tiwari sir said that we have to assess the situation. And if need be, we can 
call the police and police will take care of the mnc yeah if you see that uh, there are aggressive people around then you must call the police at the same time dura garma sir wants to say something no no i said <laughs> डॉक्टर thanks dr dhoni madam for presenting this uh, uh, talk on a very important situation which is encountered in medical practice uh, in a very excellent way there are many dilemmas also involved in this like uh, what happened for post mortem uh, how to issue test certificate and labeling uh, in case as mnc which has been explained uh, by you in a very nice way i Uh, thank uh, all the audience for the program, and especially I am uh, thanks to uh, thankful to our uh, founder president, Dr. Satish Tiwari sir, our uh, president in India, Dr. Mukul Tiwari sir, for sparing their time and for uh, their guidance. And uh, I am thankful to uh, our uh, guest panelists, I would say, uh, Dr. B. K. Goel sir and Dr. T. K. Patel sir, for their uh, presence and for their valuable comments. And i am uh, thankful to uh, dr shubhi kulshesht uh, from mlc uh, from uh, mlh uh, for uh, her uh, great cooperation all the time when these uh, webinars are um, organized and uh, i hand over now to dr shubhi kulshesht for further thank you so thank you much, very sir. much for giving me an opportunity thank you very much Thanks, sir madam. for giving me an opportunity to contribute thank you very much okay thank you all for your time and uh, thank you to all the panelists for sharing their wonderful knowledge towards the topic of broad debt to the hospital how to proceed good night to everyone thank you thank you namaskar